Hi, this is George Cow, and welcome back to the LinkedIn course. So today we continue optimizing our LinkedIn profile and uh, specifically filling out our profile. I'm going to expand this bit so that the uh, 300 million members on LinkedIn who are searching for um, some of whom are searching for someone like you will find you uh, and refer you or hire you for your or hire you for your services, etc. So in the last lecture, we talked about uh, the importance of the uh, adding more job positions and what to include in there. And this time, we're going to talk about what to include in your summary section. And the summary section is the section on your LinkedIn profile that is, okay, I'm just going to click on random person. Ah, this is actually my, uh, this is actually my high school friend. I'll be connecting with him for sure. Um, Okay, so in this case, Jason is absolutely not uh, optimizing his uh, summary section. He's only written one sentence, although it's it's a good it's a good sentence. But uh, uh, he can definitely add more. Um, I believe there's two thousand characters that are possible for your for your uh, summary section. Actually, I'm going to look at my own first uh, so that you can get a sense of it, and then we'll kind of look at some other some other examples and and see what could be improved by them. Um, so the summary section, let me show you. The summary section is the section that's, this is this not, not this section. This is sort of the, um, the sort of overview section. But further down, uh, usually right underneath the, the posts, right underneath the overview section, the summary section. But the thing is you can actually move, actually underneath the posts, usually the summary section. But you can actually move the summary section up or down. I prefer to have my skills and endorsements section first. Uh, those of you who don't know how to move it, you basically, when you hover over a particular section of your profile, if you see this icon, you can click and drag it to move it up and down your profile. I'm going to keep this up here. But um, here it is. Here's a summary section. Most of the time, the summary section, again, is located under the, one of the th first things people see. And uh, as you can see here in mine, I have written quite a bit in my summary section, right? And so uh, what, do you, what, what, what have I written here? One, I started out with a, with a quote. Now, this is a quote I wrote um, or I added here uh, several years ago, so I may want to update this at this time. But anyway, it's a quote that kind of gives people a sense of what my values are, what I'm about. Um, now, it's totally up to you whether you want to do that. Uh, but that's, that's what I chose to start with, to kind of put them in, in, the, in a certain space to, to, <laughs> to read my profile. And then I go on to talk about, you know, this is sort of my sort of business summary, you know, what, I, what, what, what I'm known for, um, uh, you know, what I typically do, uh, whom I typically serve, what my values are. I really focus a lot on values because that's, that's one of my differentiating factors uh, compared to many people in my industry. Um, these are the people I primarily serve. Um, this is what I help people do. I'm, I'm sure I can add more here, like you know, social media and um, you know, LinkedIn and Facebook and and webinars and you know, uh, niche clarification, all that stuff. I, I should I should add more definitely. But then I give a I give a link here. Now the thing about giving links within the summary section is that people can't click on it, so people just have to. I write out the whole thing because some web browsers are able to sense that and immediately make it linkable, even though LinkedIn does not make LinkedIn doesn't make a link inside the summary section clickable because they don't want people clicking away from LinkedIn. But you can still feel free to add a link in here, just people might have to copy and paste it. I add a few comments from my clients. Uh, and I also talk about sort of what I love doing is creating free content. If you want content for free, go here. Um, and then I end with my specialty. It's kind of, kind of sort of keywords that people might be searching for. Okay. All right, so let's go back here and take a look at uh, what do you include in the summary section. Okay, so here are a whole list of things that I recommend. You kind of look through this list and see and just kind of brainstorm what could you include that's relevant for, for your background. Testimonials. Um, now, I, I can actually include a lot more testimonials because in my uh, on my website, I'm just going to go to my website, georgecow.com slash reviews. Um, I have a particular web page on my website, which is sort of, it houses uh, dozens of testimonials that my clients have written for me. So I really could include, you know, I, I really should probably include, um, you know, right here, what I do is I include just a few kind of individual comments. And because I didn't 
I didn't ask uh, the. I, I took these comments actually from the testimonials themselves, but I didn't. I didn't ask my clients. Hey, could I include the sentence on my summary section? I didn't. You know, some people could see that this is. You know, this is not the only thing they said. You know, so I, that's why I didn't. I, I didn't put a name to it. Uh, but these state statements are are absolutely true. What I what I should have put here is um, to read. Um, to read more st uh, complete statements from from you know from George Cow's clients, click or go to, and then I'll, I'll just give the link here for people. Um, so so that's what I can do. Uh, but anyway, include some testimonials so that when people are looking at your summary, they it's not just about you talking about yourself; it's other people talking about you. Okay, uh, describe who your ideal clients are. Uh, for example, I made a very simple description of, you know, these are the, the professions that my ideal clients find themselves in. I, I probably need to say more. My clients, you know, value, um, well, actually, I, I do say uh, why I talk about um, people who are service or building businesses from a service oriented perspective. Uh, I really could talk about how maybe they're tired of the hype and deception manipulation that is uh, rampant, uh, rampant in most marketing online. Uh, that they want a different, different way, a more a way that doesn't compromise the values. So that's the kind of stuff I could talk about. The things that dis distinguish me from other people. Same thing with you. What is, what? Who are your ideal clients? And um, uh, what are the characteristics that they have? For example, what professions are they? Perhaps what um, if there's a particular age range that your ideal clients find themselves in? If they have a particular passion or interest, um, if there are a particular stage of life, okay, things like that. Okay, what problems do you solve for your ideal clients? Uh, what, or what goals do you help them achieve? Think, think about this way. If your ideal clients were, you know, complaining to a friend about a problem that they're having that someone like you would solve, what would they say? Or if they were talking to a, to a friend or family member about what kind of dreams they want to achieve, what would they say that someone like you could help them achieve? What would that person be saying? Okay. Uh, significant accomplishments, especially if it is quantifiable. Number of years experience, number of clients served, results achieved, speeches or presentations given. What I have here at this time, I really could add more myself and I will be, but what I have here at this time is I've, I've been featured on more than 100 podcasts, webinars, and telesummits. Uh, I really should also say that more than uh, you know, more than 500 people have bought my training programs on social media. I've served one-on-one, one-on-one um, one -on -one clients more than 50 just in the past year, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, so numbers are more impressive for people. They can quickly see, oh wow, uh, I can understand uh, what a big deal that that is. Okay, so think about the numbers that make you more uh, make your background more impressive. Uniqueness of your skills or knowledge or approach. For me, it's about values. For me, maybe for you, it might be a particular methodology that you learn from a guru or from a particular school of thought. Uh, something that's unique about what how you provide your service. Any awards you've gotten? Um, any mentions in the media, such as newspapers, magazines, um, television, uh, famous blogs, things like that. Where you've been featured, if you've spoken on certain events, virtual events, telesummits, etc., you might want to list some of those things. I need to be doing that as well. And industry associations you've joined, uh, web pages, landing page. What is a landing page? A landing page is a web page that you want your audience to land on. Hence, it's called a landing page. That's specifically uh, asking them to do something. Well, a landing page technically is a web page associated with a marketing campaign. So it's like a marketing campaign wants an audience member to do something, uh, to give them their email address, to buy something, to consume a particular piece of content. In my case, as you can see, my I have a couple landing pages here, right? Uh, one landing page is I want people to to check out my coaching program, you know, because um, I talk about that here. Another landing page is I want people to read my client reviews. Another landing page is um, actually I want I want people to go to my web page that gives all my free content. So those those are some examples. Uh, any volunteer work that you'd like to mention or any common misspellings of your name it definitely can go in your summary section as well. So I think that's enough for this lecture. Um, I really look forward to seeing what you write. Uh, you know, uh, as you go through your summary section and write things, you may want to comment 
on on this lecture to share with people all right this is what i wrote for my testimony this is what i wrote for my ideal clients this is what i wrote for this was what for that just give other people an example i'm sure that'll um benefit everyone who's taken the course and also give you some uh, additional visibility as well all right i'll see you in the next lecture where we will talk about the principles actually you know what let me let me go over this quickly because um this is important for the summary section Notice how in my summary section, I like to use bullet points or asterisk. Uh, I use short paragraphs uh, because it's just easier to read. So when people are reading stuff online, they don't like to read huge long paragraphs. They like to make it more, uh, they like to see things that are more scannable, browsable, right? So be sure to, 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 to try to use that. And also, what, what does your ideal audience care about? What are they looking for that will solve their problem or help them reach their dreams? Or what is a referral partner looking for so that they can say, ah, this is the person I can refer people to who have the certain problem or trying to reach a certain goal. Okay, so, um, okay, so let's see. Uh, I'm going to save the rest for the, the next lecture because this has gone long enough. I hope you're enjoying this course. Do let me know, as I mentioned. Anything I can improve upon that will make future versions of this course or further modules, further lectures, even more helpful for you. And please also let me know what's working for you. What are you enjoying about my lectures and my, my mind maps that are helping you? It, it really encourages me, energizes me to keep going and produce great free content for you when I know that it's really helping you. So I'll see you in the next lecture.